start with some introductions. Hi, I'm Sarah Norman. I am from central Minnesota, which is where I currently live and teach fifth grade. I have been in education for about 15 years now as a kindergarten teacher, instructional coach, a data specialist, and a reading specialist. I love all things teaching and technology related, and I'm so excited to be here today with Anne and Brian and Angie and just get a chance to share some really great tools that I've used in my classroom this year and some successful lessons that we've had. Awesome, Sarah. Hello, everybody. My name is Anne Cosma, and I'm an educator innovation lead on Team Flipgrid. I'm going into my 20th year in education, a former first grade teacher and kindergarten through eighth grade innovation specialist in my district. And I love that my role at Flipgrid is being a teacher helping teachers. I am all about empowering authentic voice for authentic audiences and sharing and celebrating and showcasing innovative ways that our students are owning their learning journey. So I'm super excited to be here with you all tonight. Um, and again, my name is Brian. Um, I am with Capstone and have the privilege of getting to connect with uh, users throughout the entire country um, who uh, get to experience uh, our K through uh, three research tool, Pebble Go, Capstone Connect, our new uh, one source content hub um, in um, our amazing uh, interactive eBooks. But really it's all about experiences like this that I love uh, and enjoy doing uh, on a continual basis. Hi everyone, my name is Angie Kaltoff. I am a product manager here at Capstone. And prior to this, I was a teacher for English, um, English language at the elementary level, and then a technology integrationist and a per, uh, instructor at the university level. And I always wanted to help create the technology that I was using as a teacher. And so I made the move over to Capstone within the last year and I'm super excited to be here today. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for introducing yourself. We can go on to the next slide. Um, and this slide is what I like to call uh, kind of that housekeeping piece. Um, some of the common questions I know I have when I join a webinar and many of you probably have as well. Um, we want this to be interactive, so feel free to ask us anything. Um, you can do it within the chat. Um, there's a Q&A section as well if you have specific questions you'd rather ask through that uh, channel. Um, but also, uh, the webinar is being recorded, so don't worry about scurrying, scurrying to try to write notes real quick. Um, it'll all be recorded. Um, we're also including um, a copy of the slides that we're going to share here today. Um, and then definitely feel free to join the conversation. Um, both Flipgrid and Capstone uh, have Twitter handles that uh, we follow and would love to engage with you on. Um, and use the hashtag Capstone Connect. Um, ultimately, the conversation is just getting started here today. Um, some of the best conversation happens a lot of times after uh, these kind of events. And we want to be uh, there to encourage and inspire. So you can go on to the next. Um, the goal for today's webinar is to, we want to really inspire you with how Capstone Connect resources are used in a classroom, um, but specifically in partnership with Flipgrid, um, because Capstone Connect is a great tool, but it's only a great tool um, to help enable you to really use it with whatever ed tech tools you're using, and Flipgrid is one of the most uh, popular around the entire country, and so we want to make sure to show you and, um, you know, inspire you with some really cool ways that uh, Sarah and others are using it. Um, but we'll take a look at her topics um, and then take a uh, deep dive. So let's go over the agenda real quick. Um, so we just got done with introductions. Um, I will briefly talk about what is Capstone Connect and show you a, a, about a 90 second video that hopefully um, will resonate with you. Um, and then from there, Sarah's gonna take you through um, an example of some of the amazing projects she's done with Flipgrid um, and Capstone Connect. And then after that, um, Angie and Anne will actually show you uh, deep dive into how to do the kind of things Sarah was able to put together. Um, and then we'll take time at, the end, time at the end for questions. So let's get started. You're a teacher. You spend hours every week finding resources for your students. The right resources. You gather it. You send it, they click it, and get an error. Or have to create yet another login and password. They get frustrated. Ah! 
their caregivers get frustrated, and you get frustrated. There is an easier way. Introducing Capstone Connect, your one-stop content hub, where you can quickly and easily search and share educationally appropriate, highly engaging Capstone content. Capstone Connect gives you instant access to Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next, Pebble Go Spanish, Pebble Go Read More, Capstone Interactive's collection of eBooks with read aloud audio, and hundreds of other digital learning resources designed for use by both teachers and students. With Capstone Connect, you have thousands of content pieces that are matched to state and national standards right at your fingertips. No matter what ed tech tool you're using, you can give your students direct access to Capstone Connect's content with just a few clicks. Here's how it works. Once you've signed into your Pebble Go account, simply click the Capstone drop-down menu and select Search. Here you can search by either state and national standards or by title and get instant results, which you can organize by type and also preview each item to find the exact content you're looking for. Then just copy the link and directly add it to any EdTech platform to give your students one-click access. No new logins or passwords required. <gasps> Connecting your students to great resources has never been easier with Capstone Connect. Go to capstoneconnect.com and click Request More Information to be contacted by your local Capstone representative. Okay, so really want to take you through what is Capstone Connect. Um, Capstone Connect is a content hub packed with thousands of nonfiction articles in Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next. So it's uh, perfect for your K through five students um, and thousands of ebook bundle, excuse me, bundled ebooks uh, that have read aloud audio, uh, the ability to um, have simultaneous logon on any device. Um, so really it is a content hub that is meant to be um, shared with your students. Um, it's also, uh, it also includes instructional materials, perfect for being able to use uh, the eBooks as the foundation or there's uh, lessons tied specifically to Pebble Go articles, um, but all really trying to give you the content you need in any setting. So whether you're doing remote learning, in class, hybrid version, it's there for you and ready to be used. Um, but really, like you're going to see today, the biggest win for, uh, for teachers, um, students, and parents is it plugs right within um, your given ed tech tool. So today's ed tech tool we're going to look at is Flipgrid. Um, a little uh, example of what you saw, because I know that video went by really quick. Um, the image on the right shows you just a summary of the content, as I mentioned. Um, but I think it's visually important to show the search piece of it, and that's some of the stuff Angie will get into. Um, but ultimately, it's going to deliver any content you need, and you can search by standard, you can search by title, um, you can get down to the specific state standard and um, super granular, um, or all the way up to even searching for something uh, like light or dogs and find articles uh, and ebooks related to that um, topic. So. It's a great content hub. Um, at the end of the day, it's really um, meant to be a one-stop resource that you can plug into any tool you're using um, or have been using for years. So um, Sarah's going to take you through, honestly, my favorite part. Um, no offense to Ann or Angie, but this is where getting to see some of the real examples that teachers are doing with uh, Capstone Connect and Flipgrid. Um, is super cool. So Sarah, take it away. Thanks, Brian. I am really excited to be here to share a little bit about how I've used this in my classroom this year. But before we dive in, just so you know a little background, um, my classroom this year is fifth grade students. We are fully distance learning. So we are all online this year. We have about 25 students in my class that has varied throughout this um, interesting school year. 
We have one-to-one -one iPads and Google Classroom is my home away from home. I live in Google Classroom right now. Um, and so Google Meets is where I spend the majority of my day and is where all of my synchronous learning takes place. But I also found this year, I utilize HyperDocs for a lot of our asynchronous learning. And we'll go into how both Capstone Connect and Flipgrid have really worked well to help me make sure that that asynchronous learning time is super successful for my students. Before we jump into five different lessons, I wanted to share a little bit about the learning pyramid that we look at before we design any lesson content, especially for my distance learners this year. I wanted to make sure that we were really retaining as much learning as possible. So if you haven't seen this before, it just breaks down some of the different activities that we do during our school day and how much learning we retain from doing those activities. So over the next five lessons here, you'll see a variety of different activities throughout um, all the way throughout the pyramid, but we really want to try to maximize that learning as much as possible. The first component that I wanted to share with you about is something that is so important in our classrooms this year, that social emotional learning piece. That is something that has really been at the core of my teaching for years, but I think all of the teachers in the house with me this year will agree that that has become a cornerstone for what we are doing. So throughout these SEL lessons, social emotional learning lessons, I wanted to make sure that my students were really applying what we were talking about and bringing it through not only in their schoolwork, but in their life as well. To do that, I've been fortunate to find some really awesome tech tools that have helped both Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next has some great articles that I'll show you in a little bit, as well as some fantastic eBooks. And then on the flip side of that, to really demonstrate that understanding and share out and connect and build and bridge, which is all a part of our social emotional learning, I found that Jamboard is a great tool as well as Flip, Flipgrid. So I'll show some more of that. But before we dig in, my social emotional learning lessons are always based around the CASEL framework and really looking on those individual competencies as we go throughout. So you'll see a little bit of that here. When we started with the SEO lessons at the beginning of this year, my district has a curriculum, but I knew I wanted to layer some more into that because like I said, it's become a cornerstone of what we're doing. And Pebble Go has been a great resource for that as well as some different eBooks. Um, here you can see a couple of the different articles and eBooks that we've used this year so far in our SEL lessons. One of the components that I love so much that I think Angie will touch base on in a little bit is the audio feature. So all of the articles, if you don't know, all the articles and eBooks have the ability to be read out loud. As a teacher in fifth grade, this was huge for me. That is a game changer. It makes sure all of my students have access to the same content and the same curriculum and were able to participate fully and feel really successful, which I loved. So as we go through and take a look at some of the, oh, I skipped a slide, there we go. As we go through our SEL lessons, I wanted the students to respond to each other and Flipgrid quickly became my number one stopping place for that. I fell in love with it at the beginning of the year when we started to do some different introductions, but I really saw the impact it could have when I'd have new students come um, because I was the distance learning class for this year. I've had quite a few new students join me throughout the year and my students would create little welcome videos for these students. And and I found that it has made such a powerful impact, not only for that new student coming in feeling super anxious and worried about what they were getting into and trying to do school online and all the feelings that come with that, but um, my other students were watching them and connecting with each other and finding different ways to socialize through the Flipgrid platform. So I'm super excited um, for you to hear more about the discovery library and different ways that you can use that in your own space with, for social emotional learning. Some overall thoughts about um, using um, both Capstone Connect products and Flipgrid for social emotional learning. I can't recommend it enough. It is so fun. My students ask for these activities. We want to do them. It is helping us build connections. We're showing appreciation for one another. You can see a snippet of a jam board that we made for a prayer professional in my classroom. It really is what ties us all together and has made this year super successful in my room. One of the things I noticed though right away is that it helps with participation if I provided options for my kids. And what I mean by that is if we were doing a Jamboard, I let my students choose if they wanted to write or if maybe they'd rather draw something. Or when we go into Flipgrid, 
sometimes kids don't want to be on camera. So I give them that option to either um, be on camera or to not be on camera and or use one of the amazing filters in Flipgrid that I think Ann will chat with you about that you can pixelate. So if you're just having an off day and you didn't want your face on the video, you could do that or you could layer in some text boxes instead or use the fun stickers and emojis. All of those things have really impacted my student participation and made it so that we could all be successful and participate together, even if you were kind of having an off day and weren't really feeling it. So it's one of the great things that I love about it. All right, and I don't have the chat feature up, but please stop me or Angie or Brian or Ann, stop me if you see any questions as we go and let me know. We, um, I wanted to share with you a little bit, one of my favorite lessons we've done so far this year is all about the Everglades. During this lesson, I wanted to make sure not only were we learning about the uh, Everglades and the environments in that piece, but I wanted to bring in some of that conservation efforts and the defending. I have some students who are very passionate about the environment and what they can do and in the world. And I wanted to build on that and maximize that throughout this lesson. Some great tech tools that helped us with that then were Pebble Go, um, Pebble Go Next has some fantastic articles as well as some amazing eBooks. And I'll show you an example of that coming up. Then when we built that on top of our curriculum, both our language arts curriculum had some information about Everglades that also tied into our science curriculum and some social studies pieces with that defending. Um, then I found just by happenstance, I was Googling Everglades virtual field trips and I came across um, the Everglades National Park has a live virtual field trip that you can sign up for. And I'm telling you, it was the best field trip I have ever been on in my entire life, in person or virtual. So we have that link. I think actually, um, Brian will share a little bit. We have those links in our Flipgrid topic for you if you want to check it out. Otherwise, hit me up on Twitter. I'll send it to you. Everyone needs to go to the Everglades on this virtual field trip. It is so cool. And so we did this great virtual field trip, which really tied all of our learning in together. And I wanted the kids then to share out in kind of a different way. And I wanted to encourage some of the art that they like to do. So we use this app called Sketches School. And it was recommended to me by our art teacher. It's one that she uses. And I found that it is a fantastic tool to use for drawing or displaying different information because not only can you use different art tools for your kids that are super great at drawing, they love all of the things that they can do with it, but it also has an option where you can take screenshots or upload images and you can trace on top of it or draw on top of that and make it your own, but it gives you a nice start. And so I found that for my students that are hesitant drawers, um, maybe that's not really their jam, not their thing they still were able to participate and feel super successful because of that extra option. So after we went through our learning and did our virtual field trip and drew, um, then each student was tasked to draw their favorite part of the Everglades and why they think conservation efforts are important for that part of the park. We created little commercials that we uploaded to Flipgrid. And I'll show you that in a minute. So through this lesson, we really looked at some different science standards. And as Brian mentioned, you can pull right into Capstone Connect. You can pull up those science standards and it will bring you a wealth of resources all connected to those standards. That was really helpful for me as this is my first year in fifth grade. And I loved just being able to not only see the articles and the eBooks, but the lesson plans as well. That helped me kind of take it to the next level. Here is an example of one of the eBooks that they had, or they have. It is a class field trip to the Everglades. So it worked out perfect for my class and they loved it. We enjoyed reading it together. And there is little screenshots actually of some of the lesson plans attached to that eBook, which was really nice for me. Um, it helped simplify things on my end. I didn't have to reinvent the wheel to come up with some really great discussion starters and questions and prompts and things like that. So like I said, after we made our drawing, we got to create our own commercial, which was so fun to see. And they did a fantastic job with it and utilized lots of different tools and pieces that are right within Flipgrid. Then the part that I added for this lesson is the gallery walk. And in my class, a gallery walk is when you create something in Flipgrid, we don't want to just be done there. We don't want to just post what we've done and walk away. 
So we do gallery walks and I build them into each assignment to give them time to go and check out what everyone else has done. And in that time, they need to give what's called a tag response. It is, um, the T stands for telling them something they like about, so a compliment about what another student has done, ask them a question about the video that the other person had made, or give them a suggestion. And we always spend time not only doing that first round, but coming back. So I found it super important to allow my students to have time to go in, answer those questions that were asked about their videos, or connect with the other students. Not only has that increased the engagement, um, but it really has helped create a classroom culture that is focused on learning, not only from me or the materials, but from each other. And it's been so fun to watch and see how much they have grown over the last few months with it. So a few final thoughts about this project. As I mentioned before, best virtual field trip ever, hands down coolest place. And it's not just because I was in Minnesota and really wishing I was in Florida at the time. It was so fun to go. So you can see a couple live screenshots there of one of the park rangers who helped us on that live field trip. And this field trip was great too. Not only did it tie into conservation discussions and just general information about the Everglades, we really got to have some fun conversations um, coming off of that about different problem solving things, different STEM projects. Um, for in instance, he talked about the bark um, that is fireproof. And so my students were really having great conversations about how, how come we can't put that on our houses? Like how could we mimic that, right? So, so many great things that you could do with this project and continue on with it. And another thing that I really like Flipgrid for that we used after this Everglades field trip project is we come back to some of our successful lessons and our learning. I like to loop back to it from time to time. Not only does it honor the time and effort that they've put into all of this work, but it just kind of keeps that learning happening and allows us a chance to touch back. So one of the things we've been doing is what's called two truths and a lie. So I would have a couple students create another video where they share two truths and a lie about their part of the Everglades or what their favorite part was. And then in the comment section on Flipgrid, we get to share out whether we think those what one the lie is. So it's just another way to kind of loop back and keep that learning in the students' hands as we go through the year. All right. So Simple Machines, this was a fun project because it allowed my students to really start to create. And I wanted them to apply the concepts, not only of Simple Machines, but really pull into different design and engineering processes and show us what they learned about that through the um, project that you'll see here in a little bit. So to start off, we layered on top of the school curriculum that we have for science, um, brought in some great resources from Capstone, some really interesting eBooks that helped kind of bring some different Simple Machines to life and some fun stories. And then I used another ed tech tool called Nearpod, which is a free website. They also have an app that allows you to create kind of interactive lessons. And there's different virtual field trips, interactive games, things like that. So if that's something that you're curious about, um, shoot me a comment later and I'm happy to chat with you more about that. And so I, after we did our learning pieces through um, the different um, the ebooks and through Nearpod and our different lessons, then we created our very own simple machines out of anything we had at home. And we had to share then some fun facts about our machines in a presentation that we created in Flipgrid. So again, the standards here, not only did we want to look at the science standards with this, but I wanted to bring in that engineering design and the inquiry process just to really help bring through that critical thinking skills for all my students. Some of the great resources that, sources that Capstone Connect has is these fun books about the simple machines. And again, they have the lesson plans attached to it. So you, if this is new to you or a new area or new subject, or even if you want a refresher, it's great to use um, to dig in and see. I found them to be really, really helpful as I was teaching the content. For this lesson, um, what was fun is we decided, Angie created this ebook shelf, and we decided to share the resources this way. 
So as you heard Brian mention, you can share the link and so um, with your students and you can do that like directly through Google Classroom, but I knew I wanted to give them a lot of choice and we wanted them just to explore and have some fun with it before they decided what machine they were going to create. So Angie designed this beautiful ebook shelf. And if you want to know more about it, there's a couple links right in the presentation that will show you how to do it. But basically, each one of those photographs is directly linked to the resource that it is. So the article or the ebook right in Capstone Connect. I love that for so many reasons. One, we didn't have to worry about signing in or somebody got logged out or it kicked them out, whatever it would be. They were able to go right to the resource and read and come back and find other ones that they liked. It was simple easy to use, super efficient. And how we did it is we put the ebook shelf on a Google slide, and then I just shared that presentation out through Google Classroom. So kind of a fun way to mix it up a little bit too. So as I mentioned, after we did our research, then we got to make our own simple machines at home using any materials that we had which was a lot of fun to see what they came up with and interesting, some interesting choices for materials too. And they got to share out their simple machine that they made and give a demonstration as well as share some fun facts about that type of simple machine. As I mentioned before, then once we created our videos, we do a gallery walk where we watch everybody's videos and you need to give at least two tag responses on two of your friends' videos to help encourage that conversation and dialogue between the students. And just a quick review, the tag responses are telling something you like, asking a question or giving a suggestion. And I found that having those guidelines really helps so we're not just saying, I like your video, right? It really helps to put some great words and we use some sentence starters and things like that to encourage the dialogue between the students. Some ending thoughts on this project. You can see a few examples of the simple machines that we used. My favorite is that one in the right. She actually made a screw. That's what that's a model of. And I wonder what her parents were thinking when she pulled that out of wherever she got those materials from. So I love that she did that and kept it open-ended. It was really neat to see their creativity through the videos. And I would have to say, even if I was in person, I think I would still have my students make their simple machines at home. It was, it kind of forced them, if you will, and allowed them to get super creative with different things that they had around the house. And a lot of the families uh, joined in and participated as well, which was fun for them to have that connection. The next lesson that I wanted to share with you today is the Native American Shelters Project that we did. This was one component to a greater piece of Native American history, which is a, a large portion of fifth grade content. And I knew that looking at how much that Native American history was and how important that is um, throughout both our social studies curriculum as well as our language arts, I wanted them to create something so they could really connect to that learning that they're doing and have something tangible to help them um, further understand and deepen their knowledge of that history. So some great ed tech tools that you use were some amazing articles that you'll see here um, coming up in Pebble Go Next that really helped to bring a lot of life to the topic, as well as we used Nearpod for some virtual reality tours. I was able to find different Native American structures that we got to explore um, virtually and go in and around and see how they're built and see, you know, some Mayan pyramids and different teepees and different places throughout the world. So it was a lot of fun for the kids to do and increase the engagement a lot. And then after they explored those shelters and read different articles, they got to design their own Native American shelter based on one of the tribes that they were studying. And they got to create a presentation that went more in depth then, not only about that type of shelter, but about that Native American tribe. And we created those presentations and posted them into Flipgrid. Some of the standards that we use, as I mentioned, it is a large part of our history standards, as well as understanding the societal piece and how they're built and so much goes into it. So this is a pretty long unit. But again, those standard searches were so helpful for finding some other content that played into it and helped make those connections and build and bridge between what we are learning in social studies and in our language arts. Here's an example of one of those great articles 
There is so many wonderful um, articles right on Pebble Go Next that my students loved to look into. And what I really liked is why we focused on this lesson on the Native American shelter part of it. When they went back in, when they decided what they were going to build and they decided to go back into these articles to research it, because the articles are so comprehensive, they were really getting a lot of great extra information and rereading and learning some more about and taking a deeper dive into that um, history or the culture. So why we came at it with the focus on the shelter, it helped to reinforce those concepts that we were already talking about throughout our curriculum. So I love that piece. Then, as I mentioned, we created our shelter and made a video demonstration of the shelter that we made, as well as reported facts about the tribes that they researched. And I mentioned at the beginning of um, my part that I like to give them options. So sometimes some of my students love to be on camera. They love that. You probably can think of a kid or two that that is their space. It is their spotlight. That is their thing. And then I have quite a few kiddos who are like, nope, I want nothing to do with it. So again, giving them that option to when they had to report their facts, I didn't say you have to do it in a certain way. And they were able to then either utilize text boxes to share their facts or different um, stickers and things that they did throughout, or they got to be front and center in the star of their show if they wanted to be. So that's a fun way to tie all of that information together for them, but still let their personalities shine through. Here are some examples of the Native American shelters that we built. This project, I would suggest giving lots of time for exploration and research. They wanted to continue to learn and grow with it and keep going with it, which is, you know, music to every teacher's ears. So it was fun to see how um, involved they were throughout. And leave the buildings of the shelters really open. As you can see here, we've had some, we had some creative um, thinking. The one on the left there is actually made from McDonald's cups and leftover McDonald's um, bags and napkins and things. And we had somebody build a shelter in Minecraft to even going outside in the Minnesota winter and building one out of sticks and logs. So it was um, amazing to see their creativity come to life and everybody participated because it was so open ended. They didn't feel restricted or like they had to have something or made it look a certain way. They got to really go with it and focus on the important parts of the learning of the project. And the last project I want to share with you tonight is the Landforms project. We actually just wrapped this up not too long ago. It is one of um, a super fun, one of my favorite science projects, I have to say, seeing the end result. And throughout this whole unit, I wanted to make sure that we were applying the focus of um, erosion. That is a part of this. So not only did we need to learn about landforms, in the earth science um, part of it, but we wanted to talk about the effects of erosion and what can we do and how do humans impact the earth around us and that piece. So I wanted to make sure they could demonstrate that knowledge and that connection. The ed tech tools then that I used to help demonstrate that were so great. They were fantastic. This lesson um, was the span of a few weeks and I'm glad we took our time to really get into it and do it well. So we utilized not only the different ebooks and some fun articles in Pebble Go Next, but also did virtual reality tours in Nearpod. We got to go to some beaches that I wish I was there now. Um, Grand Canyon did an amazing uh, virtual field trip of the Grand Canyon. That was a lot of fun for my students and just really got to explore landforms and try to learn more about erosion as hands on as we can from being that distance learning perspective and from where we are. We then, Angie and I worked together and we created a presentation in Google Slides that I'll show you in a little bit that shared out with my students. And then they were tasked to create their own presentation utilizing the different information from the resources. They then took that information as well as built their own 3D version of a landform. They got to pick anyone they wanted to do. And we tied those together using an app called AR Maker. If you haven't heard of that before, it is an app that uses AR or augmented reality, which is layering your camera, uses your camera and your environment around you, and then you can layer in different pieces from your iPad or from the technology. 
So my students use that app to combine a video of the 3D landform they made with the presentation based on the research that they had done. So once we were done with that video, we were easily able to put that right into Flipgrid. One of the things that I really like about Flipgrid is how easy it is for me to pull videos from different apps or places in. So you can make your video in Flipgrid, but you can also quickly pull that over. My students do a great job of it on their own, which I love. Um, they are really able to be successful with that. And we'll go into that in a little bit more depth here. The standards here were the um, Earth, um, Earth science standards focusing in the landforms and those changes, like I said, I wanted them to be doing some critical thinking about erosion and what we're doing and um, different components with that. So here is a screenshot of that presentation that I described to you. So in that presentation that we made for each student, it had everything for the project. So in Google Slides, it really functioned kind of as its own hyperdoc, if you will. In there, it was directions for the project. There was the rubric for the project, so they knew um, what that would be for the end project as well. There was um, the research questions, as well as space for their notes. And then we had these um, hyperlinked at the end based on the different landforms and they were direct links right to those types of landforms within either ebooks or articles. And this was really helpful for each student to have in their own presentation for a few reasons, but the one that I wasn't expecting, and I probably should have been maybe, but um, we had a few students who we started talking about why would you choose a certain landform before you start researching, right? So maybe it's a place you like, maybe you've been there, maybe it's a place you want to go. And then we also got to have a really great conversation in regards to before you commit to doing this whole presentation, spend some time and go into these resources and see, is there enough information for you to do your project and do it well? And what happened um, is they, we did some great work with that, but of course, a couple days in, a few students changed their mind and said, I don't want to do uh, cliffs anymore. I don't want to do beaches anymore. I want to do rivers. And it's like, okay, that's okay. Because we had all that information all together here in this presentation, they were able to seamlessly transfer what they were doing their project on, didn't miss a beat, we didn't lose any time, they were able to then just jump right in and keep going. And that turned out to be um, something I wasn't expecting to need, but was really helpful once I looked back and was like, I'm so glad we had all of this information there for them because they were able to maintain their success and complete the project um, on time and do a really good job with it. The video we made was in AR Maker. Like I said, in that app, I do take some time. I've used it for other projects. So if that's something that interests you, I recommend going step by step and really giving them the um, ability to learn the tool, right? The format of it before layering in different content like in this project. That helps them to be super successful when it is time to do these larger projects themselves. So it was nice um, to be able to um, jump into AR Maker. We had used it for some other projects before and then create a video that we were easily able to bring over into Flipgrid. And then we did our gallery walk um, with our responses with our friends and making sure that we're making those connections with each other. And um, really so many compliments came out of this one. And it was fun to see how they were impressed with what they did. And rightfully so, you can see here on this screen, a few examples of what they did. It was amazing. It was so fun to see. I had sent out a salt dough recipe, but I said, you can use Play-Doh if you wanna use Play-Doh, you can use kinetic sand. Um, I even had a student go out in the snow to build theirs, which whatever they wanted to choose. Um, and my families helped. So families got to help each student as they worked on it. And you can see in the bottom left there. So the student made a river and made a 3D version of that with some great detail and then layered um, snippets out of that Google slide presentation right on top of her 3D project. And hers were actually sliding down the screen. So they moved from left to right, like it was in the river. And uh, yeah, it was so great to see their personalities come to life with this. Build up to this project though, 
it was quite a bit of time, like I said, and giving them those step-by-step -step directions, which each of those tech tools really helps to make the overall project successful. And I'm not sure if you can see, but for all my fellow Harry Potter fans, that beach on the bottom there, that little white sign in the back says Sirius Black Beach. And that is one of my students who has fallen in love with Harry Potter this year. And so she created a whole Harry Potter themed beach, which I thought was great. Not only did she learn about landforms, but she was able to bring in something she's super passionate about and just really increased that engagement um, and enjoyment that we had. So that is all the lessons that I have to share with you today. Thank you for letting me talk about some of the cool things we've done. Thank, Thank you for sharing. sharing. I'll, you. I'll share my screen now. And cool. I'm going to show everyone how to find these resources and then what to do with them once they find them. So actually, let me try that one more time. Share my screen and I wanna share my sound with you. Okay. Um, do you see, yeah, you see my screen? Great. <laughs> okay, so what I'm hoping you see here is Pebble Go. And once you get to Pebble Go and you go to click sign in, you get into your Pebble Go account. And once you're here in the upper right corner, you'll see Capstone. And this is the drop down that you'll use to find Capstone Connect and our great resources. So you'll see a button up here that says search by standards or title. And when you click that, now you are here at Capstone Connect. And like Sarah mentioned, there are two ways that we used to find these resources for her. So the first is by a search by standards. So when I click on that button, I get to decide what state I'm in, and that's going to help pick the standards. So Sarah is in Minnesota. So we went into the Minnesota standards, and we picked, for example, science for her simple machines and fifth grade. So after you complete your state, your standard, and your grade, all of the standards that we have resources connected to or correlated to will show up for you. And in her case, we went with within physical science for motion. So you can click at any one of these levels to get resources returned to you. And so I'm going to go into the motion. And once it's returned, you're going to see Pebble Go Next articles because Pebble Go Next was created with third through fifth grade in mind, eBooks, so Capstone Interactive eBooks, and teaching materials. And we have different toggles up here. So if you only want to see Pebble Go Next articles, you can turn everything else off. But in this case, uh, Sarah used a resource called Build It. And here you can see that there is a book in Capstone Interactive for Build It and a teaching resource. So before we knew we wanted to use that book, we clicked on it to view it. And this is a Capstone Interactive eBook. And so you can read it page by page, by page or all at once. So I'm gonna go by page by page. I'm gonna turn my audio on so you can hear what it sounds like. Building solutions. The world is full of wonderful puzzles. So that's an example of the Capstone Interactive eBook that she used. And if she did decide she wanted to use this, so in Capstone Connect, there is this really simple copy link button. So as a teacher, you click copy link. That link is copied to your clipboard, and then you can paste it anywhere you'd like. So you could put it in your notes in Flipgrid for students, or you could bring it into your Google Classroom or a Google Doc or a Google Slides. I just wanna show you what that link actually looks like. So here you can see all of these letters and numbers. And what that means is your username and password is built right into that link. So when you share it with students, they don't have to remember their username and password. It brings them right to that book. Another way we found resources is in the title search. So here, for example, Sarah mentioned that she did a project on landforms. And she mentioned the beach, and I would love to be at the beach right now. So let's search for beach. So when we search for beach, we can see that we have some eBooks and some teaching materials that go with it. And again, if you'd like to just click the name of the book, it brings you to the book. Or if you know you wanna use that, you can click copy link. She also um, talked about rivers. So I'm gonna search the word river and here you can see that we have resources in Pebble Go, which is a K3 audience, Pebble Go Next, eBooks, and teaching materials. They all work similar. You can click the name of the article to go right to that article in Pebble Go. And 
Sarah mentioned she also liked the natural voice audio. So as a student, I can click this button. Rivers are bodies of water. And it will read it to me. And so if I'd like to use this article in any of my teaching materials, I can go back in and click that copy link. And I could bring it into something like that Google slide deck she was talking about. I could bring it in and I could put a resource in here and I can link a resource by pasting in um, my URL. So I will stop my screen share and I'll let Anne talk about what this looks like with Flipgrid. Well, let me go ahead and unmute. I have just been eating up all of this, loving seeing the incredible resources and ideas shared. And folks, I think friends on the end, thumbs up, you see my screen, correct? Perfect. So I'm going to bounce in and out of, I just have one slide I want to start with, and it's the mission of Flipgrid. And I just want to say thank you to Capstone for inviting me to share tonight. It's been an awesome like treat to hear from Sarah and Angie. And I just want to share a few ways um, that if you are new to Flipgrid, you can learn a little bit more about it and find incredible capstone content inside of the Flipgrid Discovery Library. But to start with our mission at Flipgrid, our mission to is, is to help you empower every learner on the planet to share their voice and respect the diverse voices of others. And I start with that simply to say that is what we take so seriously. And we are inspired every day by the incredible ways educators around the world are empowering their learning communities, whether you're face-to-face, -face, virtual, remote, hybrid, in all the ways we learn on as educators, right? And so it's just an absolute joy to get to share something I'm super passionate about, which of course is Flipgrid. So if you are brand new to Flipgrid, please know it is a completely free, simple, accessible video communication platform. I love to say it's a, it's a way for you to share, celebrate, and showcase your voice. So Sarah gave some incredible examples of students turning in their work or, or submitting videos that they created. And beyond that, extending the celebration of voice with those gallery walks. So my goal in the next few minutes, and I'm going to do it fairly quickly, um, but you'll be able to come back to this if you need to revisit it or find support resources. I just want to show you how simple it is to get started by creating a group and a topic and then highlight the incredible content from Capstone inside of our Discovery Library. So again, feel free to click sign up if you are looking to get started. Educators are the ones that create Flipgrid accounts. Students do not. I'm simply going to click on my educator login button, and this takes me right into my discussion. You'll notice across the top some different features. Tonight I'm going to talk about discussion and discovery, but discussion is to me home base. It's where I get started. It's where you create groups for your learning communities, and then you add topics, which are those discussion starters or prompts. And so I'm going to go ahead and just click on the button that says groups and then select create a group. And what you will do is simply give this a very simple title, make it match your name, your classroom, your content area. Uh, I'm going to call mine reading club. And then as an example, simply customize my join code. And I think I'll go with let's read 723. So let's say I'm starting a book club for the rest of the school year, and I want to add different ways my students can celebrate their authentic reading lives. Gave it a name, customized the join code, and now you'll notice that you simply determine what permission settings you want. If you want students to use their school email domain, if your school district does have a Microsoft or Google email domain, all you have to do is simply type in that domain. If students have a different one, perhaps it starts with STU, simply add in your school domain. And if you're collaborating with anybody else and you know theirs, add in theirs. Um, if your students are younger scholars and they don't use a school email domain, you can use a student username. This can be as simple as two characters. So even the youngest scholars have a very quick and easy, secure way to access your content. 
Additionally, if you're utilizing Google Suite for education, you can link your Google Classroom. And there is a public option if you're using this in your own learning community with your family, etc. But I'm going to go ahead and utilize this student email domain for this sample tonight and then show you a few other things. You can customize this personalize it with a group cover. And I know down in textures, there's this really cool book option. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that one and simply create my group. And you notice it's now ready to share. I've made the landing place for my community to engage with. But you also have all of these options to share it. Again, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, or it can be as simple as copying and pasting and using that link like Angie demonstrated in so many ways, right? So I have my group and now I'm ready to add a topic. There is an introduction topic that's been already created for you, but I wanna show you how simple it is to add a topic. So let's call this my, oh my goodness, can I type and talk at the same time? My favorite book. And I gave it a title. You can generate as simple or as sophisticated of a prompt as you want. So I'm simply going to say, do you, do you have a favorite book? Please share what it is and why you love it. Right? Super simple. Jazz it up with hyperlinks, emojis. Make it as sophisticated or keep it as simple as you want it to be. You have all kinds of creative ways and different media you can use to engage your students. I'm simply going, going to go ahead and click add an emoji. And I love these new Flipgrid stickers we've added. So I'm going to choose this little love smiley face um, since we're talking about favorite books and books we love. There are, again, some other ways you can customize your topics. I do want to take a moment and point out topic moderation, which is one thing you could use to keep responses private to you as the educator if you choose to. You can also determine how students can respond to each other, video, text, etc. Determine a recording time from 15 seconds all the way up to 10 minutes. So I'm going to cap this at one minute and enable closed captioning. I'm going to point out the button that says more options and again simply say feel free to click on this there's all kinds of ways you can customize how you set up your topics but it's as simple as a title a prompt some media and then if you want to customize any of these essential elements i'm going to go ahead and click create topic and you see a unique code to share this individual topic I'm simply going to say all set. Now, because of the sake of time, I'm not going to demonstrate what it looks like when students add a response. But again, as soon as you share that topic, your students will click on the link or type in the code or grab that activity from Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. And when they click that big red record button in the Flipgrid camera, they will have all kinds of creative possibilities to share their voice. So in this demo, I have set up my reading club and you notice I now have two topics I can use with my community. I want to show you where you can find incredible content and we call that the discovery library. So at the top of your screen in your Flipgrid Educator account, when you click on Discovery, you are going to find over 34,000 ready-to-use topics right at your fingertips. And as an educator helping educators, I love to say this is working smarter, not harder. Use this tool to find exactly what you need. And since you're already using incredible capstone resources, I wanted to just show you this little button right here, right inside our featured partners. You will notice this awesome tile that says Capstone Pebble Go, and that is where you can find ready to use content from Capstone. I love that their mission is to help empower children and, and readers of all ages um, to not only develop literacy, but help them develop their lifelong learning, right? That's what we do as educators. It's what we do as lifelong learners ourselves. So within the Capstone Publishing Partner page, you're going to find popular topics that they have, 
they have 37 different ready to use topics from pretend you're a computer scientist, holidays around the world, how to be a good friend. Um, I wanna show you a little trick. I love to click on this button that says engagement. And you'll notice, goodness gracious, this topic, you should read this book has been used over 3,800 times and it's generated six months of student learning around the world. That's phenomenal. So I just wanna click into this and show you what one of their topics looks like. Thumbs up, five stars. What book do you love? How could you get others to read it? So this is a great topic you could use to encourage your students to share a book talk. You see the prompt right here. And then these are some instructional goals that Capstone has shared in their integration notes. But what you just need to do if you wanna save it for a future use is click that save to a collection button. But if you wanna use the topic right away or bring it into your community, uh, you simply click add topic. And then if you wanna use it as a standalone topic or within a group, you simply select what you wanna do. I'm gonna add it to my reading club group I just demonstrated and then click next. It's been added. All I have to do is go to my topics. And now you'll see I have this template that Capstone has shared with me and I can immediately share it to my community. So friends, again, I just wanna encourage you go into that discovery library. And again, not only are there featured partners, we have a topic of the day, a wonder of the day, but I am gonna view all of the partners and again, show you right here, this phenomenal, this gorgeous purple tile that says Capstone Pebble Go. We recognize the logo and all you have to do is click on it and you will get to all of these resources. Again, it's ready to use content. You can search by subject or audience or do a general search of their topics, but these are all ready to use at your fingertips to pull into your own Flipgrid learning community. Yeah. So while you're there, will you scroll down just a little bit further? We just got all of the topics sh that Sarah shared tonight into the Discovery Library. So you'll see all of those examples right there at the top. I love it. So Native American shelters, the Everglades, the landforms, the simple machines, brilliant, brilliant content that literally all you have to do is click add topic and choose how you want to use it. So I love that, Angie and Sarah. Thank you so much, friends. It's just right here at your fingertips. So I know I raced through a ton of information really quickly, so I just wanna leave you with a resource. If you notice in the top corner of the screen, we do have access to our Help Center. If you are brand new to Flipgrid and just getting started, you're welcome to visit help.flipgrid.com or click on that Help button and type Get Started and it'll walk you through everything I just covered. But I definitely think you're gonna have some epic learning and reading adventures ahead as you utilize this capstone content from inside the Flipgrid Discovery Library. And friends, that's it. That was, that was my part. So Brian, you wanna come back? Thank you guys so much. This has been um, incredible. Just to see some of the ideas um, that uh, Sarah put forth um, using both Capstone Connect and Flipgrid to build, um, but even seeing the, uh, the how-to of how to get all these resources, um, we really hope that it's been uh, you know, inspiring, but also you can see how easy it is to do. Um, I know some of this can feel overwhelming at times, um, especially when we're bombarded by all sorts of different uh, resources out there in the world, um, but I know Flipgrid and Capstone, we both share in uh, a common mission, uh, which is really we want to make um, teachers and educators and students and parents, we want to do our part to make your lives just a bit easier. And so we hope you are, were able to get inspired and see how easy uh, this is to uh, be able to do. Um, if you do have questions or want a, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one demo, contact us. Um, you can go to capstonepub.com or even pebblego.com uh, and there's a contact us form. Um, and shared with you how to uh, get help uh, with Flipgrid, um, but also be on the lookout for an email coming uh, tomorrow uh, morning, and it'll have in there for you a copy uh, of the slide deck, so you can go through and look at some of the resources 
Um, you also have the recording of the webinar to watch again or share with others, and then a certificate uh, if you were doing this for professional development. Um, so thank you again. We appreciate um, all you do. Um, and uh, thanks again to Sarah Ann, and Angie. And I hope you all have a wonderful uh, rest of your Thursday. Goodbye. <laughs>